I am the resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though he die. And everyone who has life has committed himself to me in faith, shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives and that I, the last will stand upon the earth. After my awakening, he will raise me up, and my body I shall see God. I myself shall see, and my eyes behold him who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself, and none will become his own master when he dies. For if we live, we are alive in the Lord, and if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, when we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, so they rest from their labors. So you'll, if you have a blue hymnal in front of you, we will be starting off our service with hymn number 482. Red Book, the Book of Common Prayer. We're going to begin on page 493. And the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light, grant that your servant, Harry, being raised with him, may know the strength of his presence and rejoice in his eternal glory with who you wish, and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. On the next page. O God, whose beloved Son took children into his arms and blessed them, give grace to entrust Harry into your never-failing care and love, and bring us with all your heavenly kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Most merciful God, whose wisdom is beyond all our understanding, deal graciously with the family of Harry in their grief. Surround them with your love, that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss, but have confidence in your goodness 
and strength to meet the days to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated and we will have our first reading. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. In your service bulletins, you'll see Psalm 23, and it'll be read by our psalmist. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Corinthians. So we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For our slight momentary affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to be further clothed with our heavenly dwelling. For surely when we have been clothed in it, we will not be found naked. For while we're in this tent, we groan under our burden because we wish not to be unclothed, but to be further clothed, so that when what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. The one who has prepared for us this very thing is God, who has given, up, who has given us the spirit as a down payment. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to be pleasing to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life, and who does not come under judgment, but has passed from death to life. Very truly, I tell you, the hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For just as the Father has life in himself, 
so he has granted the son also to have life in himself and he has given him authority to execute judgment because he is the son of man the gospel of the lord praise to you lord christ in the name of the father and the son and of the holy spirit Amen. Please be seated. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I uh, thank you all for joining us this, mo this afternoon here at St. Matthias Episcopal Church, both in person, and we have a large, lot of folks that are watching online. This is a celebration of life for Harry. And we share the blessings of God even in our deep pain. We believe that the Holy Spirit gathers us together. And I see that power at work this morning. We gathered here in the embracing love of Almighty God, our strength and our cons and consolation. Your presence is a blessing. And I'm confident that Harry would be pleased that you're here with us today in celebration of his life with you, his family, and friends. After our service this afternoon, everyone's invited to process to Lytle uh, Community Cemetery where we will lay Harry to rest. And then you're all invited to come back in our parish hall where we will have a reception in Harry's honor and we'll have an opportunity to share hairy stories. And believe me, when you see some of those photos we're gonna see, you're gonna, you wanna know what the story is behind those photos. Harry was born in Brooklyn, New York on February 21st, 1945. And he is a fellow brother in arms, serving in the Air Force from 1962 to 1983 for 23 years. And he retired as a master sergeant and then worked and retired from the U.S. Postal Office. Harry is survived by his loving wife, Joe, sister Dorothy, brothers Matthew and William, and stepdaughters Manda and Stacy. One of the trips that Harry was so excited about was when he and Joanne attended the Wounded Warrior and Veterans Family Camp last year at Mustang Island. He was so looking forward to attending last month, but he wasn't able to. His desire to attend was heavy on my mind as I was at the Wounded Warrior Camp without him. And as I walked along the beach where the waves slowly rolled in, I was struck at my footprints that were washed away by the waves as I walked as if I was never there. Nobody could ever tell I was there. Harry's footprints and handprints are all over St. Matthias. Everywhere you look, you see Harry. Everyone look up at our lights. Our sacristy lights, that was Harry. The new knobs to turn on the lights was Harry. When you pulled up to the church and saw the newly painted beautiful white church, that was Harry. As you walked onto the sidewalk on the power wash sidewalk, that was Harry. The clasps that are used for our cross to hold in place at the altar and in the sacristy. That was Harry. If you use the restrooms, the towel holders, uh, was Harry. The motion activated walkway lights between the buildings was Harry. The newly painted front door was Harry. The motion activated spotlight was Harry. The new kitchen floor thresholds was Harry. The new walkway steps was Harry. The new blinds in the parish hall was Harry. 
everywhere you look was Harry. Now, have you ever had a wow moment? That moment when you are filled, so filled with the love of Christ. For Harry, I still remember his wow moment when the Holy Spirit filled him with God's love. He told me that he experienced such an overwhelming feeling of love when he first entered St. Matthias. Harry had a new passion and a direction for his life with the Lord. As you'll tell from the photos that we are going to share, you'll see that Harry was a lector, a lay Eucharist minister, a lay Eucharist visitor who brought communion to members of our church family who were homebound. He was also a worship leader who led the service when I was very sick last year. He was also our bishop's warden. It was so nice knowing that I didn't always have to be at church for work being done, meeting repairmen, all kinds of folks that would show up because Harry would be here. He would often say, Father, I got this. Just go home. He took a lot of pressure off of me. His eyes would light up when, and he'd get the biggest smile whenever he talked about his love, Joanne. At Harry and Joanne's wedding at St. Andrew's Catholic Church, I had the unique opportunity to walk Joanne down the aisle as her father and stand as Harry's best man. Then I accidentally drenched him with the aspergillum to bless their marriage. Now, it's a handheld implement that you dunk in water, and you're supposed to dunk it once and go, you know, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. I didn't learn what to do in seminary with that thing. So I'm there, in the name of the Father and the Son. And he's like, he, he's coming back. You know, I didn't mean to drench him, but, you know, he didn't say a word. So uh, in my defense, you know, as I said, you know, we, we had never learned. Now I know what to do with one of those things if I come across that. You know, Harry was an avid golfer, and he would often go to the Divine Golf Course and was a longtime member of the San Antonio, the Men's San Antonio Golf Association. And did you know that is where he met his love, Joanne? Forever the evangelist. Harry invited more people to attend St. Matthias than anyone else I know. Harry typified a true disciple of Christ. He was always inviting people to St. Matthias. In fact, at the end of his life, at the last stay at Bamsey, uh, Bamsey Hospital, he must have invited every doctor, nurse, visitor, orderly to come to St. Matthias for a visit and attend Jameson's baptism or our church Thanksgiving dinner. He even asked Joanne to print flyers so he could put in everyone's offices and inboxes at all of Bamsey. Even the, in the emergency room, he was inviting people. You know, it, it was amazing. Harry was passionate about studying scripture. Now, he and Joanne would spend mornings uh, discussing various passages of scripture and, and how each interpreted those passages. Now, he would always attend Bible study with questions in our readings. Now, we've had several discussions about his illness and I'm often asked how he was feeling and if there's anything that I could do for him. He said something to me that was hairy. He said, I'm okay. I'm just sorry that I'm letting you down and not being able to help with our community trunk or treat. 
our divine parade, and our church Thanksgiving celebration that was his idea. Here he was in extreme pain and not thinking of himself, but others. He would often speak of his love of everyone being part of our community of faith and getting involved at St. Matthias activities. Now, he was disappointed on Sundays when our numbers were low, and he would share his dream of having our church build like it is right now. And I'm sure Harry is smiling, seeing all of you. In our gospel reading, Jesus says, Very truly, I tell you, anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and does not come under judgment but has passed from death to life. We believe the Father sent his Son, Jesus, to bring us over from death to to life, to bring us over from darkness of sin to the light of forgiveness. In one of our discussions of heaven, I told him how he would be greeted by past family members, friends, and even Erica would be there Sorry, to say, hey, old man, welcome to heaven. Harry's eyes just lit up. And he left. Now, when someone we know who, and we love passes away, it can be very painful for us. Our heart aches. That person is no longer with us, and we miss them. It's a terrible feeling. Harry made so many positive impacts on the lives of everyone, and even those that he briefly encountered and we're here to honor his memory. Now, we come together to acknowledge that we share the loss, we share that feeling, and somehow it makes it easier to bear. We're meant to be in community, the way God intends for us to live our lives. Mourning together certainly doesn't restore what we've lost but it does help us to begin to accept it and know that life will go on. Harry was special, and we're here to celebrate his life and memory. Yet still, on some level, we know that life will go on. Harry was special, and as we celebrate his life and memory, we still realize that we're going to be hurting for a while, and understandably so but we can all rest in the knowledge of our faith and says as we mourn, but we need not worry, we need not fear, we need not let our hearts be troubled because death is not the last word. As, and we believe this, and Jesus says, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Death is a shock reality. It interrupts our daily routines and makes us reevaluate the life that lays before us whenever death takes the one that we care about. Everyone who is here today knows that death isn't the end, and we can take comfort in knowing that we are not alone. Jesus the incarnate Son of God was made flesh, therefore he experienced deep sorrow. He suffered in pain and death. We affirm that life, death, and resurrection of Jesus constitute the climax of salvation history. Jesus is our Savior who redeems us from sin and death. Harry epitomized what we read in Matthew 4. When he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of people. Harry was always talking with folks that he had just met, inviting them to our church. He had a loving and caring heart. Harry, even though we could never get that 30-foot-long octopus kite to fly, 
down at Mustang Island, I know that you are flying high in heaven. But I can't think of a better tribute to honor Harry than continue inviting everyone you know to visit St. Matthias and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with others. Having left this earthly habitation, Harry is now sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with others. Having left this habitation, I'm sorry, uh, he is now in the presence of our Lord. He rests from his labors. His soul is with the Lord. He is at peace. His place is in God's presence, is secure. Amen. On page 496, let us stand and affirm our faith through through our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Prayers of the people are on page 497 in the Book of Common Prayer. As you are able, stand, sit, kneel. For our brother Harry, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Harry and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, yes, Lord. Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear, Hear us, us Lord. Lord. You raised the dead to life. Give to our brother eternal life. Hear, Hear us, Lord. Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our brother to the joys of heaven. Hear us, Lord. Our brother was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all your saints. Hear us, Lord. He was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Hear us, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our brother. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life, our hope. Father of all, we pray to you for Harry and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May his soul and the souls of all the departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So if you just want to wave in the Episcopal faith, we, we greet each other for the peace, so that's what we're doing now. So. Peace of the 
peace, everybody. So I'd like to explain what we are going to be doing with our, our Eucharist. The Episcopal faith recognizes that anyone that has been baptized can receive communion. If you would like to receive communion, we're going to have our ushers will be, uh, will be forming a line here, and I will be standing with the host. Karen will be standing with the wine, and you can receive the host and just take it, or you can receive the host and dunk it into the wine and then take it. Or you can, if you don't want to receive communion, you can always fold your arms like this, and I will provide a blessing. But you're not required to receive communion. Okay. So um, you can go ahead and, and be seated. And um, so we are going to have a communion hymn. And I think that the words are on the bottom of the bulletin. Okay. So we're going to begin. Okay. Now I'm getting my digital verger. Okay. Okay. While communion is going, the words are on the book. See, I'm thankful for my digital verger right there. Uh, but in, in case I haven't said it, I appreciate everyone that is watching online. Okay. So, so we will, for our for the Eucharist, yeah, we'll, we'll begin. On page 361 is our, our Eucharist. So we're going to be on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead, and comforts us with the blessed hope of everlasting life. For to your faithful people, O Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when our mortal body lies in death, 
there is prepared for us the dwelling place eternal in the heavens. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. And gracious Father, in, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take the remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Our ushers, if you could come forward and and maybe and probably we'll start right where that first pew is.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that in our great love for you, you have fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ. 
and you have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament, sacrament may be to us a comfort in affliction and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crying, but the fullness of joy with all your saints through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is Amazing Grace, found in your blue book on page 671. If you ever want to know that, um, see how priests can make mistakes, well, this ceremony, this service got to me. Yeah, I forgot the last part. So we're going to do the committal. Now, thank you, my digital verger, for, for reminding me. So if you would like to turn to page 499, we are going to be doing the, the commendation. Okay, on page 499. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign Sorry, but life, life everlasting. everlasting. You are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to the earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, Christ, to your servant, servant, with your saints, saints where sorrow and pain are no more, neither, neither sighing, but, but ever everlasting. everlasting. 
Into your hands, O oh merciful Father, we commend your servant, Harry. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Amen. So let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. So pallbearers, if I could have you come forward.